Welcome back to another video guys. Today we are here at Upper Boon King and I am with Ijun who owns this Factor O2. Um, Ijun, thanks for coming man and over to you. This is my Factor O2. It, the, uh, starting with the film set is the Factor O2 disc 2021 in a pearl white colorway. The, the frame is a size 52. Uh, moving on to the wheel set is the Black Ink which is a, like a sub brand of Factor. The Black Ink 60mm wheel set with a Black Ink C-Post. Group set is a mix of Altegra and 105. The crank set is a quad power meter with Altegra chain wings. The cockpit is a Shimano Pro LT uh, copy, I think. The stem is 130mm long. The bars are, I think, 42mm, uh, 42cm wide. I, I guess you can say it's sort of an arrow tuck or the, or the puppy paws position, to, to use that position on, when I'm riding. But uh, when it's, say, when it's like, sh when the shifters are straight, I can't get uh, like, like good support under my forearms on the bar, so I tilt them in so I can put my forearms around here. The saddle is a specialized power arc saddle in 143mm wide. I am 178 or 179cm tall. The, the size of the frame is 52. If you're going by the geometry or the sizing chart, the frame, I, I think I'll be uh, recommended to, I think it will be recommended for me to use a size 54 but I always, I've always preferred to have a longer stem and seat post on, a, on my bikes so I think the size 52 works for me too. Factor sizing is also pretty big. The rotors are XT front and um, 105 rear. These calipers are also 105. I've owned this bike for about two to three months so it's still pretty new. I bought this bike off Carousel. It was about 6.5k. Um, my previous bike, which was the Specialized LA Spin, it was a Alu bike. So and I've always wanted to try a fully carbon frame. So when I saw this pop out on the market, I grabbed it. And it suited my, what, what I was looking for in a bike at that point of time. Okay, so the wheels are, like I said, 60mm deeps. They are a black ink. The tires are Vittoria, um, Corsa, Graphene 2.0 with gum walls. The wheels are pretty stiff. They are quite comparable to my previous carbon wheel set on my LA, which was a uh, Wolf Primas. They make a really nice sound when you're going really fast. The frame is also pretty stiff. It is compliant, so it's not that harsh of a ride and, like, compared to my LA spin but it's still stiff when I need it to be. It is, it is not aero at all. There's nothing aero about it, but it's still pretty fast, I think. I think it's probably faster than my LA spin, surprisingly. The pedals are low keel to max carbons, so they are quite stiff. With, they come with a, a steel plate, I think. All right, guys, here, let's go on to the Instagram Q&A. You guys submitted your questions. Follow me on Instagram to ask any other questions uh, for my next interview. How did you start getting into road cycling? Actually, I came from a uh, fixed gear bike before this. I was riding that for about a year until I realized that it was quite like, restrictive. So I moved on to a road bike, which had like 11 gears compared to one single gear. It had brakes for one, which is so much safer now that I move on to cycling. Any disc brake rub? So far, I have had, I have not have any, ha, I've not had any disc brake rubbing, which is, but it is definitely a constant fear for me since I was using rim brakes before this. I don't think that disc brakes are necessary, but they definitely make life, I, when riding, it makes life easier, but when you're like maintaining the bike, it's so much harder because I, I don't dare to touch it. I, I'm so worried it will start rubbing or have some sort of problem. I, I think I'll prefer disc brakes just for the performance because like I don't have to worry about um, the braking performance in the in the wet or whatever. This brake is just pretty consistent no matter where you, no matter what the weather is or where you are. How do you tell if the frame is OEM? There's actually a serial number under the fork and certain parts like this ring, like it doesn't say factor on it. The headset is also different if it's OEM. I don't think you would be able to tell. Maybe the paint job will be a little worse compared to this. What do you think is making your bike so heavy despite being a high-end, lightweight frame? Uh, for one, despite it being a climbing bike, it, it has 60mm deep wheels, which is definitely going to be heavier if you compare them to, say, 40 or 30 mm. It, has, it also has heavy, a heavier group set, like 105, and also it's this up, which is definitely heavier than wind brake. So I guess that all, all those factors combined makes it pretty heavy. What does the ride quality feel like? I think that the ride quality is pretty good compared to an Alu frame, which is like my previous bike. It's not that harsh. How would this bike compare to your previous bike? 
uh, in terms of stiffness and ride quality or anything else that you want to add? My previous bike was a specialized LA Sprint. Despite it being an Alu bike, I would say it's still a pretty stiff bike. But the difference would be that, um, as other, some other people would mention as well, uh, an Alu bike is stiff basically everywhere, but a carbon bike is stiff in the right places, which makes it more com comfortable when you're riding generally and still very stiff when you're, say, you're sprinting or putting out a lot of power. Don't slam stems decrease the value of the bike? Slam, slam stems do not decrease the value of the bike. It's when you cut the steerer tube to a, to a certain height where you can only slam the stem. There's still a decent amount of space on my steerer tube, so you can still adjust the position. So I don't think it has decreased the value of my bike. Why the saddle so trash? <laughs> <laughs> Um, saddles are, well, they are specific to each person, but I mean, maybe you can put a pillow on your, on your saddle and then it's better for you, uh, but well, it's pretty good for me. Why you got 1K crank, 1K sing dollar crank, but using $600 group set? Well, I have to compromise in some places. Um, after getting a power meter on my previous bike, I realized that power data is actually pretty important to me. So I would rather invest in 1K crank and be called Peso 105, but they still perform well enough, so it doesn't really matter to me. Why still 105? Because 105 is, well, it's the people's group set, it's affordable, and I do not have money to buy a higher tier group set. Your blacking wheel set, how is it? Is it smooth? I would say that my blacking wheel set is pretty smooth, it's very stiff and makes a very pleasant sound. I've got a spontaneous question from myself. What would be your next road bike? Actually, I was looking at a SL7 Comp before I bought this, but unfortunately it was all out of stock. So I might either go in that direction or a specialized van because I'm a specialized fanboy. Yeah, I would I would definitely look for a higher group set, like an Altegra Di2, because I've always wanted to try that. Or maybe the SRAM ETAP. It might be um, it might be more expensive if, if I were to crash and break some components, but I think it sort of balances out because like, you know, cables do stretch and over time, so you do have to replace them or like your gears might start to not work as well on mechanical group sets over time because like, yeah, cable stretch, but in electronic group sets that doesn't really happen as much and it's quite simple to like tune it up. Coming back to electronic group sets and mechanical, previously I interviewed someone and that guy had a very good point. He said that if you were to run an electronic group set, there is uh, more chances of the components failing and will be much more expensive to replace electronically as compared to a mechanical group set where you can just replace the cables. So do you still want to use an electronic group set? Uh, I will hope that that will not happen to me, firstly. But I think that if a certain part in, a, in an electronic group set were to fail, then it would be pretty straightforward to to identify where the issue is. Like maybe say the cable came out or the cable needs to be replaced or maybe you need to a new junction box. As compared to say mechanical group sets, when you find an issue, when there's an issue on your bike, right? Sometimes it's, sometimes it's not that straightforward. Like fundies are pretty annoying to tune yourself. When it comes to electronic group sets, it's more of like press of a button or you go into the app and you tune it yourself. Huh? It's pretty simple. That's a wrap for today, guys. Uh, today's video is sponsored by TI Parts. Um, TI Parts specializes in titanium bolts for your bicycle. So check them out. Uh, link in my description and you get a promotional price. Um, Yijun, thank you so much for coming out and showing us your Factor 02. I hope to see you again soon, man. Yep, thanks for having me and filming my, my bike. Okay, awesome. I think we're done.